Hi, everyone. And look, uh, I'd like to start first by passing, uh, paying my respects to uh, Aboriginal elders past, present and emerging. And I'm up here in Orange, and uh, which is Wiradjuri country. So uh, hi, everybody. Um, what I would like to talk about um, is what's changed and what, what's coming and what's really exciting. Um, I have put a bucket load of links. Hopefully, Michael, you can uh, all see those in the chat box. Absolutely, yep. Um, the, big, the big thing is, and I'm going to share my screen um, if I can, so when I'm talking about things, they're just not seeing um, as what Billy Connolly would say, mate, is a face that is windswept and interesting. Um, I, I love that line. Where do you go? Like, if you're coming as somebody who is now, you've got a child and you're going, well, where do I go? Or where do I just keep up to date? Your major developers have got all the best stuff, okay? And it's the, the place to go. So I'm certified by both Apple and Microsoft as an accessibility specialist. Where do I go to? Apart from the fact I get lucky enough to chat to these guys, go to the Apple accessibility website if you're on the Apple system. And it's really about finding what system works for you um, and because you're going to find the bulk of the information there that you want and the nice thing when I click on the Apple site and, um, and I can go into vision I can see everything that I want to know from a vision perspective like how does voiceover work and voiceover and braille work and magnifier and how does it work across all of the different environments so it's sitting down with a cup of tea or a coffee and going in there the nice thing is that I can click into Apple systems and I can go and get, if I want a copy of the Braille user guide for Mac or iPhone or the watch or TV or HomePod or any of those things, they're there. The same as that they have a dedicated accessibility support number internationally. And so you can go there, hop on, and if you need um, additional support, they will give you that support. Microsoft will do the same, which is great. And it's free. All companies, and this is great, they are continually um, adding to new features. And so um, what's some of the new ones coming, particularly with uh, the new version of uh, Mac OS that's just about to hit? It's the fact that VoiceOver now um, has better image descriptions uh, and that you can annotate it yourself in, in markup. You've also got better keyboard access, cut, greater customised Pointers, you've got more accessibility emojis if you're using those. Um, and VoiceOver will now describe PDF signatures, which is really cool as well. There's some of those things. But one of the things that it's not in the accessibility, but it's just part of everyday system is live text in photos. So anything that you take a photo of, yes, this has been in the Android system, but whether I'm on a web page, whether I'm in Apple Photos or anything else, live text will now pick up the image of that text and the AI on the device will automatically convert it for you into live editable text, which VoiceOver can interact with. And it's the same on the iOS uh, system as well. So if you're on your iPhone or you're on your iPad, similar things. And that's the beauty of it, is you've got all those customized features that work right across the system. What's really cool on the um, iOS is the per app customization. So you might go, yep, all right, I might need magnification or I might need voiceover um, for a lot of the time, but there might be some apps where you don't want to use part of that, or you might want to add color filters to just a particular app because of the way that it's designed. And so one of the new features that's um, about to release with iOS 15 next week will be the fact that you can customize um, the, uh, those features. And that's really cool because it's not just system-wide, it's now how do you do it by app depending upon what your needs are. Now, if that's not enough, one of the cool things, of course, is that Apple runs its own little YouTube channel. And I can go, and it's one of the links that I've set up for you. Here are the step-by-step -step videos. How do I get to use speak screen? How do I use back tap? How do I start a wheelchair workout with Apple Watch? Every one of the accessibility features 
um, there is a small video that will take you through how to use it. So you go, yes, I want to use technology, but no, I, I don't know all this stuff and I'm feeling overwhelmed. There's a lot, a lot of support. And that's really, really cool. And it's the same with Microsoft. Yes, I can go and deal down by vision, hearing, neurodiversity, same as all those other areas. So I can just go in and have a look at the tools that are on the system, um, whether it's in the Windows system. And the interesting thing, folks, is Microsoft really see themselves nowadays as a platform. They don't see themselves as, as Windows. And so um, I do a lot of work with Microsoft, but um, they know my preferred platform is my Mac and my, uh, my iPhone, but I use Microsoft Office on that. And they're really, really comfortable with that. But there's a stack of features that are on there. I'm going to talk about Soundscape again because it's still one of my all-time favourite apps. Um, and I can go and dig down because where Apple will do this annual update of features, what Microsoft do, they're, they're far more iterative in that approach. So I can go and look at, in their Microsoft sway, where are things up to all the time? So how are we now using accessibility um, improvements there if you're using Azure Pass, if you're starting to play with, um, you're now working with that technology um, with big servers and a whole range of other things. So they've got a whole stack of information, let alone there's a whole range of new things coming with Windows 11, which is a, not far off. But one of the big changes is how the feature sets in the Mac and, uh, and Windows are really, it's like the old Holden and the Ford competition. There's a lot of similarity. Um, in changes with pointer sizes, pointer colors, all sorts of options, um, how it uses artificial intelligence, it's all in there. So it's really going, okay, what system do I feel comfortable with? What's going to work for my needs? It's not saying, oh, I have to use X or I have to use Y. It's really up to you guys. And so there's a stack of information there for you. Again, there's a disability answer desk. So it's a dedicated line that you can go and find resources that suit your needs. So whether you're in kindergarten, whether you're in uh, university, there's a whole stack of resources. And again, they have a YouTube channel. And I can go and look at all the videos that are there about how to use the products. This is the, the thing. You're not left alone. Uh, just talking about Android, um, there's not a lot around. Um, yes, they've got some features. You've got to download the, the accessibility suite, which is a, a separate suite. Some of the developers are now putting that accessibility suite uh, in by default, but not every um, Android phone manufacturer is doing that. But yes, you've got Braille display. Yes, you've got TalkBack. You've got a range of those features. It just... Um, my personal opinion, it doesn't work as seamlessly or as cleanly. Uh, and that's, that's the issue. Um, where is this all going? Well, of course, some of you would have seen Seeing AI. Um, it's one of my favourite apps. I know my good friend David Woodbridge from Vision Australia, he loves this app as well. Um, made by Microsoft, but what's it run on? Runs on the iPhone. So yes, it's using that artificial intelligence so I can recognize um, barcodes and documents and scenes and people and car um, currency, whole stack of stuff that it does really well. Picking up different lights, all sorts of things. And of course, the wonderful story David tells about a product called Microsoft Soundscape. I love Soundscape. Basically, it's um, 3D sound for mapping. And so David would, uh, shared the story with me recently about how he was traveling from home to the railway station. Now, uh, David's um, totally blind. When he walked from his house to the railway station following just the maps, it would have taken him about half an hour. But because there's little cycleways and little laneways, it's, they're not always showing up on the maps. Now, what this allowed him to do was put a little digital beacon down 
And so when he went for a walk with his wife, he was able to know where to put those beacons down. The really cool thing as he's walking along, because the first little laneway was coming up on the left, the sound came up on his left. And so what used to be a half hour trip is now a 10 minute trip. It also means you can crowdsource. So we can all drop digital beacons and share that on open maps. It's really, really exciting about where that's going. Talking of where things are going, okay, there's a thing called matter and matter really matters to us. We talk about the internet of things. This is um, a collection of all the major companies. So you're talking Google, you're talking Amazon, you're talking Apple, you're talking about all of those guys. And what they've done, um, they've said, let's come up with an international standard that we all agree with and about how we can then um, design products that will work with any system. So we go, look, if you want a smart speaker, you want a video camera for home, you want a whatever for home, this is the international standard that we want everybody to go with. So yes, I can see Apple's there, I can see Schneider Electronics, Ikea is all part of it. Whole stack of really, really big companies are on there. And it's great. So, for instance, it also uses a thing called, uh, it works on um, over the internet. It also works with Bluetooth and it works with this new thing called Thread. So, basically, it means that um, it's more reliable than Bluetooth. It means that your devices can all piggyback off each other to create this, um, I suppose, like a, a your, your, own, your own little net or web around your house that they can better connect to each other and better deliver services to you. The nice thing is, we go, guys, in the end, you choose your mobile phone or choose whatever your system and any of this stuff that's now built to this new standard will work with that. For instance, my new um, uh, iPod mini is part of that thread functionality as is the new Apple TV. But it doesn't stop there. And this is where it's getting super, super exciting. Um, things continue to change. And I'm just finding my uh, lady I've come across here, Amy Pavel. Now, Amy um, is doing a postdoctoral fellow at Mellon University. You go, why, why are you bringing this up? Well, it's where the research is going. Look at... All those changes that have happened in accessibility in the last 10 years, imagine where it's going to go. So we're now starting to talk about, yes, we've got augmentative reality, but how do we make augmentative reality accessible to people with a broad range of different disabilities? Amy and her team are doing that work. Amy is also a, um, a senior engineer at Apple um, and she's a Google scholar. But it's all, this is really cool stuff to have a look at if you're like me and a bit of a geek because you start to get a picture. The same as how do we build in um, automatic audio description within videos, how, particularly videos that have been made by just the general public. How do we start to look at providing Siri to people who don't have great speech or have consistent speech? There's a lot of things that are happening there. And that's the most exciting piece is that this whole piece of accessibility is only going to continue to ramp up at an amazing speed. Uh, what does it do? It changes how we live, learn and work. That's really, really exciting. So what do I'm doing in there? Well, putting on the New South Wales government hat because I've now moved to, pro I've now with services New South Wales as their principal accessibility specialist. So what are we doing? We're now looking at how do we improve accessibility of all the apps that Service New South Wales provides? How do we procure better things? How do we employ more staff with disabilities? And that's really, really exciting because in the end, the people who create things are the people who decide who gets in and who gets out. They're the ones who decide the barriers. We've got the technology that removes the barriers we now need people who are designing new systems and new services and new environments to design in a way that, remove, that removes barriers from the start. And that takes a, a change in mindset. 
But yeah, it's strap on, guys. It's really, really exciting where it's all heading. Fantastic, Greg. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'll ask a quick question. Mm -hmm. But what I'm going to encourage people to do is, again, keep channeling your questions. We will put it up. Uh, Michael has allowed us to run way too late today. I'm trying to save up some time. But I've got to ask the question that, that comes every year that's always topical. Um, children at school um, and doing schoolwork, is there a preferred platform? It's the kind of Mac versus Windows no, look, versus iPad. It, it, no, no, there's, there, there's, there's not. And look, having worked across different systems and different schools in my careers, no, in the end, um, if, if, there's, if they're saying that, look, I mean, what am I seeing in my time when I was with, I just f finished recently with New South Wales Ed, we knew a lot of the kids were using iPads and blue, uh, refreshable uh, braille displays. Um, why? Because they were really light, they were really portable, it had all the features, it fitted into their bags and it had a really good battery life and it had a really great screen reader. For other people, it'll be a Windows device. If a school says it has to be something, that's like somebody saying you have to buy a certain brand of car. And they go, no, nah, doesn't happen. Sorry. So feel free to push back. Feel free to push back. That's great. 